I played a $210,000 poker tournament and won $2.1 million doing so. I'll share my experience going through the tournament, the tournament overall, and we'll get some really amazing footage of all the big hands I was involved in. It was the $210,000 buy-in Triton Coin Rivet Invitational event. Invitational is pretty rare in poker, which was a special type of tournament. And the structure was really cool because for each businessman that played the tournament, they could choose a pro that they want to invite. So it was up to the discretion of the organizers to decide whether a player is a businessman or not. And I think 95% of the time they did a pretty good job doing that. There were two, three players in there that probably are more on the pro side, but whatever. I think it had over 100 entries at the at the end, so uh, you had the opportunity to, to take one re-entry. It was really cool because they organized a party before, there was a live draw, everyone was there, and before that there were a lot of high rollers running already, so I had some good deep runs at that point in time, felt really in the zone, was ready to play, and I really liked the format because day one you played basically all the businessmen played together and then all the pros played together and then day two you started mixing. Yeah, that just made for a, a nice dynamic where um, I think it drew a lot of businessmen to play this tournament, which generally I think is good. Just re a really special occasion to have half of the field being businessmen. So uh, obviously a lot of them have poker experience and have played uh, quite some poker already, but still it's it's uh, nice for a pro like me to play in a format like that. So I, I personally really enjoyed it. Shout out to Triton for the organization. It's been absolutely incredible. The, the venue is really nice too. And they just, I mean, the best staff in, in the game. So uh, it was a blast to play this tournament. But let's get into the action. I ran deep into this tournament. Day one, maybe a very quick recap. I think I, I bagged a little more than starting. Nothing too crazy has happened on that day. Um, not any super wild hands. I had one hand where I played a big pot against Michael Adamo, where I had uh, ace king on a king high board in a three bet pot. So that was probably the biggest pot I, I won that day. And then yeah, bagged with maybe a, a bit under two times starting or around that. And then day two, is when the fun started. Now businessmen and pros are being mixed. Really amazing. I got uh, pretty lucky in a big hand against Nick Petrangelo where it's a very interesting constellation as well. Like button opens a weaker player and I three bet small blind and he called four bets. It's an interesting spot where I'm obviously wider uh, in the small blind. Now the question is how wide is he in the big blind? How much is he is he four bet folding there? And I decided to five bet jam king queen off and he had ace king and I uh, hit a queen, which was a really important pot to win. Also, I think kind of a deciding point because from that point on, um, I had a pretty big stack and I yeah just got mostly in really great positions. And the, the very, very important part was like kind of uh, zooming forward was to get to the bubble. Because I feel generally when binds are higher, people get a bit more let's say you know money aware not necessarily money scared but money aware um, because you know in the end it's only two buy-ins but you know it's five four hundred thousand dollars so it's a you know it's a large amount and people really don't want to make mistakes and I think I chipped up from four million in chips I would say to about seven million probably played 50 out of 55 hands. We were, I think, six-handed on the table, so I open raised basically every hand, won almost all the pots, which was super, yeah, valuable for my stack, and I do understand the dynamics pretty well as well, so so that was really a great spot to be in. Now comes uh, a turning point, a big one, where the rest field, you have maybe seen the stream. If not, I can highly recommend it. It was an extremely funny tournament because of the dynamic, because of the businessmen uh, still being left. There was particularly one player that, yeah, is a, is a crypto OG, a legend uh, in the Twitter streets. And uh, his name is Carl. I hope I don't butcher his last name. It's, uh, I think, Chapier Gatien. And uh, he's French and, uh, yeah, just a really cool dude. And uh, he had lots of chips too. He was basically part of the business circle. Yeah, he was really out there. He had no fear. He was very tough to play. And I think he had about 4.5 million in chips and I had maybe seven roundabout uh, maybe had even five and then there is a huge hand where we're maybe 13 left I would say 13 or 14 left this must be day three already I believe so I go into day three chip leading me and Linus have all the chips basically I think I have like seven point something he has about seven million yeah and then day three starts one of the earlier hands I play yeah we're like 13 14 left I am in the small blind Carl opens and I three bet. One million. Tournament defining moments. 
actually there was a button flatter, so I squeezed really big out of the small blind to a million and he shoves for like, yeah, four, four point something. And I call and he has kings and he wins. And then I was kind of middle of the pack and he was chip leading with infinite. We have a new chip leader. It is Carl Chappé Katien. Seems like another tournament that might be slipping away from Fedor Holtz from Chip Leader. <laughs> that was a really, really big hand, huge variance, but kind of just plays itself. I'm not folding after he shoves. He has been doing this with a wild variety of hands, so uh, definitely not someone where I would ever make a hero fold. And then it's just, yeah, sometimes he has pocket kings. That's that's just what happens. Yeah, in that scenario, then it's it's really important to just you know shift my mind and focus on okay, now I'm you know mid stack and strategy is entirely different. So yeah, I, I got adapted that and I think I did that rather well and then the dynamic on the final table was super super interesting so I make the final table we're last eight we're in the money already for a longer time there is like five million up top I would say or four million up top something like that really really amazing tournament super fun to play like they have done this amazing intro where you walk in and and you know you have like a huge screen with like confetti and people cheering and it, and and they do a full blown TV production for that. It was a plus, super cool, well done. And I, I could really feel this. You know, I'm sitting there, I'm I'm super in the zone, I'm pumped up, I'm having fun. So that was that was amazing. And then I just play my game. I think I I played very well. And there were. Two, three hands that I think were a bit on the fence, a bit close. And what is so amazing in those spots, and that's hands down the reason why I love tournament poker is I'm in this spot and then there's new information coming in, right? So now suddenly the chip leader, Carl, he just plays a very atypical style, right? It's not a top pro, he's he's a businessman. He, he loves to gamble. When he open raises and someone goes all in, he, he likes to call with hands that maybe pros don't call with. And uh, that increases the variance significantly and it changes the strategy entirely. So suddenly when the chip leader is, you know, raising calling queen 10 suited the entire game changes and then you have to figure out the solution you have to solve the puzzle in your head in your mind while you're in there yeah you have a few minutes time you're like okay what do i do in this spot what do i do in that spot so that's what i absolutely love about those type of tournaments there was one spot against Ebony Kenny actually and shout out to Ebony I mean she, she brought in such a nice energy it was so cool to witness like this for her this was you know by far the biggest spot of her life and and you could really tell and she didn't hide it which was also nice she didn't like you know try to hide that that she's just super nervous and excited yeah that was cool I, I was definitely um, very positively impressed by by just how she carried herself and, and that was nice to be around so there was one spot where She's in a small blind and now this is also really cool because you have a time bank, you have 20 seconds pre-flop. She goes all in in the small blind and I have king 10 offsuit in the big blind. And I know this is a call against every pro or at least, you know, I'm, I'm very certain immediately like, okay, I look at my hand, I'm like, okay, I know this is a call. And now she shoved really fast. Like she looked at her cards, she takes a bit of time, she shoves. So changes her range significantly. We'll take out some of the very top hands, definitely take out quite some of the weaker hands because she's not gonna just randomly shove a hand where she will think about folding, which changes her range. And now I have to think about, okay, what? where's that line? Like, is she fast shoving king nine? Is she only fast shoving, you know, ace X? Because then suddenly it would become a fold. And so now in those 20 seconds, maybe with a time bank, I have to figure that out. Like what, what do I think? How's she thinking? How does she approach the spot? Do I want to, you know, go tighter and just call king jack off? Or do I want to call king 10 off here? I decided to call king 10 off. How much tighter is she shoving than, you know, a chip EV standard shove in this spot is she going to be shoving like the king five off in hindsight i would probably fold i think in the position where she's in where this is the biggest stage the biggest tournament of her entire life i think that threshold is quite high i think that she would probably only shove hands quickly where she really kind of knows that you know oh this is going in i feel somewhat confident and against that i think king 10 off is a fold so in retrospect i mulled over quite a bit over the spot and i think in retrospect would have been better to just call king jack off i mean certainly king queen off and then king jack off probably call and king 10 i should fold in this particular scenario with the reads on her so this was an, an interesting spot where you you can tell like ah how you know how from a baseline i then look at my opponent and and, and what they're doing and try to take in 
that into consideration and adapt my strategy. So that's what I try to do in these type of spots. And then there were some back and forth, some really intense all in, uh, a big all in against Sam. And it was so tense in that because everyone kind of knew, okay, like if you go all in against Carl, you're just gonna get called and there's going to be this huge swing all in where you're probably ahead, but but maybe you get sucked out and, and Seth Davies got, I don't know, it's like I looked at the flop and, and he flopped top pair and I was just like, he's, he's gonna lose his hand somehow and then turn and river. That was unfortunate. And then I think we're down to four players. We're down to four players. And now this is an interesting hand because I get ace jack suited in a big blind. So Sam got quite some chips now. Sam opens and Carl three bets on the button. And I have a stack size where if I go all in, he's gonna call me basically with everything he three bets. And the interesting thing about Carl is he hasn't been three betting like super random hands. He has been calling with some extremely wide hands and I would have been very happy to put it in uh, if he flat calls but he hasn't been three betting with those, especially in this constellation against Sam when he has a bigger stack. He didn't go for the, you know, like jack four offsuit uh, three bet or whatever. So generally I see like quite decent hands. And I think in this particular spot, he rather has stronger hands when he three bets with like the occasional offsuit ace or stuff like that. But it's not, it's not gonna be like totally wild and I'm just super happy to stick it in. And he seemed somewhat like, oh, I have, an, I have a decent hand just from like the first glance. It was really interesting about this spot then now is I used a time bank and I think I even used two. I wanted to take some time to really get a feel for Sam because this plays a huge role. Like his continuing range is going to be a range that absolutely crushes me. And also for Carl. Like for Carl it's going to be a bit more difficult because it's, it, I haven't seen in enough hands so I don't know exactly how he behaves with which type of holdings. Maybe he has ace 10 suited and feels really comfortable. But it, there was generally not this like idea that oh I, I know he has a bad hand. With Sam though it's more interesting because I think the level of interest that he shows in the hand plays a huge role here. So if I can somehow get an idea that, you know, maybe he has no continuing hand currently would definitely move my hand into I want to go all in uh, territory and the other way around as well. If I think that he's pretty engaged, it might move it more into uh, the folding category. So I generally already kind of knew, okay, this hand is going in. So now let me try to, you know, squeeze as much information out of it as I can to make sure that, you know, I might be able to make uh, an exploitative play in either one or the other direction. I got a pretty strong vibe that he had a hand he wasn't extremely interested I could tell that after 20 25 seconds like his interest in the hand started dropping off so I was very confident that he's going to fold rather quickly that made my hand a pretty yeah pretty slam dunk all in I went with it and then uh, Carl had ace 10 suited we ran it I think the flop was a like king jack three or, or something like that uh, so I hit a jack and then he made a backdoor flush wow Good game. Three diamonds oh, on the river, and we lose Fedor Holtz uh, uh, in yeah, we'll fourth, Brian. <laughs> Such a strong performance here in Cyprus. Yeah, that definitely stung a little bit. I I could feel that, you know, in this moment, it's not so much about, oh, the money. It's really about, I wanted to continue. I, I, I love being in this mental zone of, I'm in there, I'm battling, like I'm trying to solve those spots. And and I was so, I, I really, really enjoyed that moment. So I would have loved to continue. I would have loved to play heads up against either one of them. But that's how it is sometimes. I gave my best. Um, I got it in good, as you say, and had a blast at the tournament series, had some great results. Some really cool stuff as well. Like my partner in the tournament was David Einhorn. Shout out to David Einhorn. We have done some sessions previously. It was an absolute pleasure and it was a lot of fun. He was an amazing student given that he's so successful in his business as well and, and he dedicated time. Like it was very, yeah, very inspiring to, to, to see that, to work with him, to spend time with him. Shout out to his wife as well. It was really great energy. We had a great time. We had some good dinner, some good conversations. Um, it was very, very nice to meet them. He unfortunately busted in day two after some, uh, yeah, being, being quite card dead. But the really cool thing Thing is that out of my 2.1 million dollar win so I came in fourth place I cashed 2.1 million and out of that we or he and I have to give full credit to David here pledged to donate 35% to a charity called New Pluralists they're based out of New York I believe yeah they're just trying their best to have as much positive impact as possible and I believe that they support a lot of other initiatives and just try to, you know, um, put their mind to how can they have the most impact in, in changing the world to the better. Yeah, we donated about 700K to that charity. I think that's a really cool effort and all the 
the congratulations and, and thanks have to go to, to David in this case. So yeah, congrats David on that and, and the cool charity you have helped build and, and helped put together. And I hope they, they do some good stuff with it. Um, so yeah, if you want to learn more about that, um, I think it's pretty easy to find New Pluralist. And that was my experience in the 210K Coin Rivet Invitational. And the next time I'm going to get that first prize. So let's fucking go.